Chapter 9 A star fall from heaven, Revelation 9 verse 1, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. The fifth angel sounded, This is the angel of the church of Sardis, which sounds his trumpet, which causes a star to fall from heaven. A star fall from heaven, here John sees an angel fall to earth, with the key to a pit. Luke 10 verses 18 to 19, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. This star is called Abaddon in Hebrew, and Apollyon in Greek, who was originally called Lucifer. Isaiah 14 verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? To him was given the key of the pit. A key is something that is used to unlock something. This was a supernatural key, because nothing has ever been able to open this pit before. This key will be used again in Revelation 20 verse 1 which would most likely be the fifth angel, since he had it in verse 1 above. Revelation 9 verse 2, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. He opened the bottomless pit, the he is the star that fell from heaven. The word for bottomless in Greek is abyssos, which is where we get the word abyss from. There arose a smoke out of the pit, when this bottomless pit is opened, much of the sun's rays will be blocked by the intense smoke from it which creates a period of great darkness. This is a fulfillment of Joel 2. The angel of this pit brings nothing but darkness to this world. Revelation 9 verse 11. Joel 2 verses 30 to 31. And I will shew wonders in the heavens, and in the earth, blood, and fire, and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. Revelation 9 verse 3. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Locusts, does this remind you of the promise Christ gave to his disciples in Mark 16 verses 17 to 18? These locusts will have the power of scorpions to hurt all that are not sealed. Scorpions have power like serpents to sting people with poison, verse 5. This is a dispensational truth that is in effect while the gospel of the kingdom is being preached during the tribulation period. Matthew 24 verse 14. Mark 16 verses 17 to 18, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Remember chapter 8, when wormwood affects the world's water supply? It will not affect God's sealed servants. This promise is for the tribulation saint who will need these gifts to help them supernaturally endure to the end during the tribulation period and to assist them in taking the gospel of the kingdom to every creature. Revelation 9 verse 4, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. This commandment was from God, not from the king over them. Only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads, only the 144,000 Jewish young men have the seal of God in their foreheads. So this means everyone else is fair game for these locusts. They torment people, and they leave the grass and trees alone. This is a supernatural army. Revelation 9 verse 5 And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion, when he strike the man. It was given that they should not kill them. Over and over again the statement is made that it was given. So, you should ask who did the giving, God, or Satan? They should be tormented five months. These beasts let those they sting get a five-month taste of what the torment in hell will be like. Those who help these people who have been stung will see their torment, and hopefully some of them will turn to God. There is no fire associated with these locusts. But in the next portion of scripture, there will be plenty of fire. Revelation 9 verse 6, And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. In those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it. This is a five-month period when men get a glimpse of what hell is like. The torment will be so bad that all affected will desire death, because people are eternal beings and they would go to hell immediately if they could die, but they cannot. There are some who are not stung, and this probably sobers some into trusting Christ. Revelation 9 verses 7 to 8, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women, 
and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. The shapes of the locusts were like horses prepared unto battle. These are unlike any locust the world has ever seen, or ever will see. These are not military vehicles, they are supernatural creatures that look like tiny horses prepared for battle with armor on them. If someone steps on them, or hits them, they just keep on stinging. Crowns like gold, shiny. The faces of men, beards possibly. The hair of women, long hair. The teeth of lions, sharp and strong. Revelation 9 verses 9 to 10 And they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Their power was to hurt men five months. The phrase five months only appears in one story and that is Elizabeth hiding her pregnancy for five months, that is 150 days on the biblical calendar, and the number 150 appears in the story of the flood. Genesis 7 verses 21 to 24, And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl, and of cattle, and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land, died. And every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground, both man, and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth an hundred and fifty days. I know that being tormented for five months is not the same thing as being destroyed from the earth, but these two incidents have different participants. In Noah's day, all flesh was corrupted except for Noah and his family, so God destroyed them to save the last remnant of humanity left. In this chapter, in the last book of the Bible, God is being merciful by giving people a small taste of what hell will be like for five months, so as to warn the rest of the world to not continue rebelling against their Creator and Redeemer. Revelation 9 verse 11, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. They had a king over them. Proverbs 30 verse 27, tell us that locusts travel in bands, regardless of the fact that they have no king over them. Here however, we read about a different kind of locust that actually has a very bad king over them. Satan is cast down from heaven at the middle point of the tribulation period, and he will release Abaddon, or the spirit of Antichrist, upon the world. Satan may think that he is accomplishing something for himself in his personal war with God, but he is only helping God do exactly what he has ordained would be done to those who reject his son. In the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, a destroying angel. In the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon, a destroyer. Revelation 9 verse 12, one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. One woe is past, the locusts. Two woes more hereafter. Revelation 11 verse 14, the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Revelation 12 verse 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Revelation 9 verse 13, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. The sixth angel sounded, this would be the angel of the church of Philadelphia. The Euphrates River is the actual border of Israel's territory that they will inherit in their kingdom. Genesis 15 verse 18, In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. For everything that happens in the physical realm, there is something going on there to control it in the spiritual realm. A voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God. This is the altar of incense mentioned in the previous chapter where voices are mentioned in verse 5. Revelation 6, verse 9, and 8, colon 3-5. Revelation 9 verses 14 to 15, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. Loose the four angels, which were bound in the great river Euphrates. These angels were bound in the great river Euphrates so they are not good angels. Were there any angels in scripture that were ever bound by God in the past? 2 Peter 2 verse 4 and Jude 6 each mention angels that are bound in chains of darkness, but they are bound in hell, not in the Euphrates River. Perhaps God bound all but four of those angels, which left their first estate in hell, and he reserved these four just for this purpose, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, while these four angels prepared in the spiritual realm, 
There was probably preparation going on in the physical realm that coincided with these horsemen in the following verses. This verse provides a way for tribulation saints to mark time during that period as 391 days, and one hour has to pass before one-third of men are killed. They will know it is coming in advance. To slay the third part of men, that would be two billion people if this were to occur soon. Revelation 9 verse 16, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, and I heard the number of them. The army of the horsemen, the army mentioned here is a supernatural army, according to the prophet Joel. Joel 2 below, 200,000, here comes the army of horsemen, led by the four angels that were bound in the Euphrates River. This army of horsemen will kill one-third of all the people alive on the earth. Revelation 9 verses 17 to 18, And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. The fire, what did God use to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Fire and brimstone. The smoke, Genesis 19 verse 28, And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the plain, and beheld, and, lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. Revelation 14 verses 10 to 11, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. The brimstone, Genesis 19 verse 24, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Psalm 11 verse 6, Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and an horrible tempest, this shall be the portion of their cup. Revelation 14 verses 10 to 11, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Revelation 9 verse 19, For their power is in their mouth, and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. If John were able to describe things so someone in our time period could relate, it would not have made sense to all of those generations that have come before ours. Their power is in their mouth, and in their tails. Joel 2 verses 1 to 11, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth, the land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yeah, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks, neither shall one thrust another, they shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded, they shall run to and fro in the city, they shall run upon the wall, they shall climb up upon the houses, they shall enter in at the windows like a thief, the earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? And had heads, and with them they do hurt, with their lion-like teeth. Revelation 9 verses 20 to 21, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, 
nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts, yet repented not of the works of their hands, even though their idols could not help them, they do not repent, because they have taken the mark of the beast and can't be saved, neither repented they of their murders, those that survive, keep on doing what they have been doing. Chapter 10 The Seven Thunders Revelation 10 verse 1 And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Another mighty angel. This mighty angel is most likely Jesus Christ appearing as an angel slash messenger because of the amazing things associated with him in the description that follows. This mighty messenger was delivering a message to John. Revelation 1 verse 13 And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Revelation 5 verse 2 And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book, and to loose the seals thereof. Revelation 18 verse 21 And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. The word angel is from the Greek word angelos, which means a messenger. It does not mean a being with two wings and a halo. There are all kinds of individuals who are messengers, and many of them are called angels in the Bible, but they are not all angels, as most people think when they think of an angel. Jesus often appeared as the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, but it is clear from Scripture that Jesus is God, who took upon himself human flesh. He did not take on the nature of angels. Hebrews 2 verse 16, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham, clothed with a cloud. The first cloud in the Bible is found in Genesis 9 verse 13. Numerous times, you will find clouds associated with those ascending or descending to and from heaven. Exodus 19 verse 9, And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. Exodus 34 verse 5, And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Deuteronomy 5 verse 22, These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness, with a great voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone, and delivered them unto me. Psalm 78 verse 14, In the daytime also, he led them with a cloud, and all the night with a light of fire. Ezekiel 10 verse 4, Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub, and stood over the threshold of the house and the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. Ezekiel 38 verse 9, Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou, and all thy bands, and many people with thee. Daniel 7 verse 13, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Matthew 24 verse 30 KJV, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Mark 13 verse 26 KJV, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Luke 21 verse 27 KJV, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17 KJV, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so, shall we ever be with the Lord. Revelation 1 verse 7 KJV, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. Revelation 14 verse 15 KJV, And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. A rainbow was upon his head. Where do we find the most famous rainbow of them all in scripture? Immediately following the flood when God destroyed the world that then was. Genesis 9 verse 13, I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Watch the context of this chapter and see if there are any similarities. Ezekiel 1 verse 28, as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. Revelation 4 verse 3, And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, 
and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. God made a promise that he would never again destroy the world with a flood. The next time it will be with fire. His face was as it were the sun, Daniel 10 verse 6, and the transfiguration in Matthew 17 verse 2. His feet as pillars of fire, Daniel 10 verse 6, and Revelation 2 verse 18. Revelation 10 verses 2 to 3, and he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. A little book open, the little book contains prophecy about the tribulation period that we are not privileged to know. It is sealed up until the tribulation period when it will be revealed to his servants, because they are the ones who will need it. Daniel 12 verses 1 to 4, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Jeremiah 3 verse 16 And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land, in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. Notice it says that he appears clothed with a cloud and a rainbow upon his head. The only other time a rainbow is mentioned in the Bible is Genesis chapter 9. God put a bow in the sky to serve as a reminder that he was not going to destroy the world by a flood. The only other time the word rainbow is mentioned in the Bible is also in Revelation 4 verse 3, when John is caught up to heaven and he sees the rainbow round about the throne of God. No doubt John got some comfort from seeing this rainbow because he would naturally assume that God was going to spare mankind. God said he would never let Israel be utterly destroyed because of the covenant he made with them. Deuteronomy 4 verse 31, He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. This little book will no doubt help the new believers endure the latter part of the tribulation period. It may also contain doctrinal information specific to that time period. The preceding generations did not obtain this knowledge because it is sealed up to us so that God's will would be done at that time. He set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, this tells us which way the angel is facing. If the sea is the Mediterranean Sea, and the land is Israel, which they are, then the angel was facing towards the south. Egypt and Arabia are to the south. It does not say that he put his right foot in the sea, but upon the sea. Who do we know from scriptures that can walk on water? Jesus. Seven thunders uttered their voices. Thunders are often associated with voices in scripture. James and John were called the sons of thunder. Mark 3 verse 17. They were to thunder out the word of God. Notice in Psalm 29 verse 3 that the words thunder, voice, and water all appear together. Exodus 19 verse 16 below, and Revelation 16 verse 18. Psalm 29 verse 3, The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thundereth, the Lord is upon many waters. Revelation 10 verse 4, And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. The seven thunders had uttered their voices, their voices thundered, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered. Daniel was not allowed to write about many things that John was to write about. John was not allowed to write about things that will occur to bring the mystery of God to its conclusion. Paul mentions that he knew a man caught up into paradise, who had heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 4. That man was John. Revelation 10 verse 7. And write them not, Psalm 118 verse 89, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. When the words that the seven thunders are needed by God's people, the seals will be opened, and their message will get to those that need them. Revelation 10 verses 5 to 6, And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea, and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth for ever and ever, who created heaven, and the things that therein are, and the earth, and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. The angel which I saw stand upon the sea, and upon the earth, Revelation 10 verse 3, lifted up his hand to heaven and swear. This is the swearing an oath, just like what we do when we swear to tell the truth, 
the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in court. There should be time no longer, there should be time no longer. Jesus, as the angel of the Lord, swore by God the Father that there should be time no longer. There literally will be a time when time will be done away with. Ephesians calls this the dispensation of the fullness of time in Ephesians 1 verse 10. Sin exists in time, not outside of time. This occurs after the millennial kingdom runs its course of a thousand years, and then the new heaven and the new earth are created. These seven thunders will either be revealed during the tribulation period for his saints at that time, or at the time when Satan is loosed for a little season. Him that liveth forever. This is from the Song of Moses in Deuteronomy 32 verses 39 to 40. Deuteronomy 32 verses 39 to 40 See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive, I wound, and I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven, and say, I live forever. Revelation 10 verse 7 But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. The seventh angel, this is the angel of the church of Laodicea, the mystery of God. Notice that it says, in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, not in the day of the voice of this angel. This angel sounds his voice out over many days, not just one. Then it says when he begins to sound, not sounds once. This lasts for days. How many times he sounds, we do not know for sure. This is not when the rapture occurs. At the last trump, because it is the last trumpet in the tribulation period. There are trumpets in the kingdom as well that are mentioned later on. But the rapture happens at the end of the dispensation of grace, not during the tribulation period. This mystery of God has to do with the Gentiles, for mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, is the false one-world church of the Antichrist. Notice that the mystery of God had to be finished during this time, as it had been declared, or spoken to his servants, the prophets. This mystery has nothing to do with any of the mysteries revealed to the Apostle Paul, concerning the body of Christ. It has to do with God defeating Satan's plan for dominion on the earth. Daniel 12 verses 1 to 6, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I Daniel looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? Or, when will the mystery of God be finished? Daniel 12 verse 7 And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth for ever that it shall be for a time, times, and an half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Verse 7 here in Daniel chapter 12 helps us better understand. Revelation 11 verse 7. Daniel 12 verses 8 to 13 And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, and made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that mocketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth, and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Notice that there are a thousand two hundred and ninety days mentioned in Daniel, but the two witnesses in chapter 11 witness for only 1260 of those 1290 days. One additional month of 30 days is mentioned here, that is after the two witnesses are killed. This is the time in which the seventh angel is blowing his trumpet. Remember he does not just make one noise from his trumpet, but it blasts for days. Most likely for all 30 days mentioned here, where the third and final woe from chapter 11 occurs. It is best for you to go ahead and read Revelation 11 verses 1 to 15 now to better understand what is going on here, 
and Daniel 12. Then Daniel mentions another date even further out, which is the 1,305 and 30 days. 45 more days after the previous 30 days just described which occurred after the two witnesses in the next chapter are killed and rise again. The people that patiently wait until that day will be blessed. We know this from the first part of the verse. As he hath declared to his servants the prophets, the prophets have spoken to Israel since the world began of God's dealings with them specifically because they are the nation that will rule during the kingdom. Luke 1 verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Acts 3 verse 21, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. The times of restitution of all things in Acts 3 verse 21 is a reference to the millennial kingdom. The mystery program for us was kept secret or hidden since the world began during the time that God was speaking to the world through his prophets. Romans 16 verse 25, Now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. The first time in the Bible where it talks about a thunder and a voice and a trumpet, was at the giving of the law to the nation of Israel, so they may know how to live in the land once they entered it. Here, his word is being delivered to Israel again, just before their kingdom begins. What had to happen before they entered the promised land? The unbelievers had to die off in the wilderness. Here the unbelieving Israelite is being purged from their ranks, so only believing Israel will enter into their kingdom. Exodus 19 verse 16, And it came to pass on the third day in the morning, that there were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Revelation 10 verse 8, And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea, and upon the earth. The little book, it is little because it is a small, but specific part of God's plan to deal with Satan's rebellion on the earth. See verse above, The angel which standeth upon the sea, and upon the earth, Revelation 10 verse 3. Revelation 10 verse 9. And I went unto the angel, and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth, sweet as honey. Take it, and eat it up. This also happened in Ezekiel's day. Ezekiel 3 verses 1 to 7. Moreover he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So, I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel, not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me, for all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. It shall make thy belly bitter. The little book consisted of the words that John was to prophesy before many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Some wrongly stated as the Gospel of John, or his other writings, which makes no sense at all. Why would the Gospel of John, or 1st, 2nd, or 3rd John, need to be kept a secret at that time? It would not need to be kept secret. It shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey, God, by having John eat up this little book, caused it to become a part of him that he would not be able to forget. It was God's way of preserving his word. Song of Songs, 5 verse 16, His mouth is most sweet. Yeah, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Psalm 119 verse 103, How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yeah, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Revelation 10 verses 10 to 11, And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples, and nations, and tongues, and kings. Thou must prophesy again before many peoples. Notice John would prophesy again before many people. It does not say to many people, because John is an apostle to the circumcision. The circumcision, the Jews, are spread out into every nation because of their breaking the covenant they made with God. Some believe that John will be sent back during the tribulation period to deliver the contents of this little book he received 2,000 years ago. That is a possibility because both Elijah and Moses make appearances during the last days. It may also mean that as one of the 12 judges during the millennial kingdom, 
John will prophesy again concerning the words of these seven thunders when Satan is released from the bottomless pit at the end of the kingdom. Those who will be believers in the tribulation period will have a much greater understanding of this book than us today, as they will have the wisdom that goes along with experiencing it. They will learn firsthand from the 144,000, and then the two witnesses mentioned in the next chapter. Chapter 11 My two witnesses Revelation 11 verse 1 And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. A reed like unto a rod, John is given a reed to measure the tribulation temple. A golden rod shows up later on with one of the seven angels, who had the vials full of the seven last plagues, to measure the city of New Jerusalem in Revelation 21 verses 15 to 17. Measure the temple of God. The temple during Jesus' day had four courts, not one, which proves that they are not the same temple. There will be worship on the temple mount by the Jews during the tribulation period, prior to the middle of the seven-year period, then Antichrist will enter it and proclaim that he alone is God. And the altar, this is the brazen altar that is to be placed in front of the temple, where animals are to be offered as a sacrifice, as the altar of incense was inside of the temple. And them that worship therein, there will be a temporary place given for the Jews to worship as a result of the seven-year covenant but that will be broken at the midpoint of the tribulation period. Revelation 11 verse 2 But the court, which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. The court, this is a reference to the courtyard that will still be in use by the Gentiles in the tribulation period, where Islam has a mosque. The holy city, in Nehemiah 11 verse 1 and 18, Jerusalem is first called the holy city. Psalm 46 verse 4, There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Isaiah 48 verse 2, For they call themselves of the holy city, and stay themselves upon the God of Israel, the Lord of hosts is his name. Isaiah 52 verse 1, Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Daniel 9 verse 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Matthew 4 verse 5, Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. Matthew 27 verse 53, And came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. It is later used of New Jerusalem in Revelation 21 verse 2 and 22 19. Shall they tread under foot forty and two months? The middle of the tribulation period is forty-two months of thirty days each, according to the Jewish calendar, which is exactly 1,260 literal 24-hour days. Verse 3. It has to be trod under foot during the second half of the tribulation period when the Antichrist breaks the covenant he made with Israel. Jesus actually tells us when Jerusalem will be trodden under foot for 40 and 2 months in Luke 21 verses 20 to 24 below, Daniel 9 verse 27, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. The one week is a time period of seven years, with the first 42 months being referred to as the tribulation period. The following 42 months of 1,260 days being called the Great Tribulation. See Genesis 29 verse 27 for a description of a biblical week. Genesis 29 verse 27 KJV, fulfill her week and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. Luke 21 verses 20 to 24, And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck, in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. The times of the Gentiles does not end until Christ reigns from Jerusalem in his kingdom. Let them which are in the midst of it depart out, 
and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Jesus is talking about Jews getting out of Jerusalem, and those in the country not entering into Jerusalem, because the armies are coming to carry them away as slaves. Then the plagues will begin to happen, and a terrible earthquake will happen at the end of the forty and two months. Revelation 11 verse 10 below. Revelation 11 verse 3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. I will give power unto, God is the one giving power unto his two witnesses, for one thousand two hundred and sixty days, which is forty-two times thirty equals one thousand two hundred and sixty. Forty-two months of thirty days each, totaling one thousand two hundred and sixty days, or three and one-half years. My two witnesses. The words two and witnesses are only used together in two books of the Bible here and in Isaiah 43 and 44 where God calls Israel his witnesses. Isaiah 43 verse 10, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. Here we read about his two witnesses. Why two witnesses? Deuteronomy 19 verse 15, At the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. A thousand two hundred and threescore days, forty-two months, consisting of thirty days each, is exactly 1,260 days. Each year was 360 days. A leap month is occasionally added in the Jewish month of Adar, Adar Aleph and Adar Bite, to make up the difference. The days are literal, 24-hour days, just as the scriptures go out of their way to prove to the reader. This 360-day year is a part of the lunar calendar which counts how many times the moon rotates around the earth, where a solar year calendar counts the earth revolving around the sun every 365 days. Clothed in sackcloth, sackcloth is black in color and is associated with mourning. Genesis 37 verse 34 and Revelation 6 verse 12. It is mentioned 46 times in the scriptures. Revelation 11 verse 4, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. The two olive trees, these two witnesses are Moses and Elijah. We are sure of the identity of Elijah, because scripture is clear on his identity. We also have Moses and Elijah appearing with Jesus, Peter, James, and John at the Transfiguration in Mark 9 verse 2, Matthew 16 verses 24 to 28 and 17 to 1 4. Some claim Enoch is the second witness, because he was the only other man besides Elijah not to taste of death, and the scripture says, Hebrews 9 verse 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So, based on this, they say that Enoch and Elijah would both have to come back and die. At least one scripture is used on this guess, but we all know what the Bible says about only having one scripture to build a doctrine off of. 2 Peter 1 verse 20 Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Enoch was a Gentile and therefore he is unqualified to be a witness during this time of Jacob's trouble. No law-keeping Jew is going to follow a Gentile preacher. The miracles performed by one of these two witnesses are identical to those which Moses performed. Moses represents the law, while Elijah represents the writings of the prophets, and who better to come back and preach for three and a half years to Israel than these two? Israel is identified as an olive tree in the book of Judges. Judges 9 verse 8, the trees went forth on a time, to anoint a king over them, and they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. Israel is represented in the next eight verses as four different types of trees, an olive, fig, vine, and bramble. See also Isaiah 3 verse 13, where Israel is called a vine. Israel is usually referred to as an olive or a fig tree. One tree is national Israel, and the other religious Israel. In Romans 11 verses 11 to 24 we read from the Apostle Paul writing to the body of Christ about Israel that Israel is an olive tree being cut off because it was dried up like a bramble and producing no fruit because of their unbelief. The two candlesticks. In Revelation 1 verse 20, we learned that the seven churches in Asia were called seven golden candlesticks, and here these two individuals are called candlesticks. A candlestick bears light for all to see. That is what these two prophets do for Israel. You get light from olive oil. Zechariah 4 verse 11, Then answered I, and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? One on the right side and the other on the left side of the candlestick. If the two prophets are represented as olive trees, then who is the candlestick? Jesus, who wanted to sit on both sides of Jesus in his kingdom, James and John, they couldn't, because God said it would be given to them for whom it is prepared. Mark 10 verse 40, who does God tell us in Zechariah 4 will stand on either side of the candlestick? The two witnesses, Zechariah 4 verses 12 to 14, and I answered again, 
and said unto him, What be these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones, that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Zechariah 4 verses 1 to 10 And the angel that talked with me came again, and waked me, as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, and said unto me, What sayest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold a candlestick all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So, I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house, his hands shall also finish it and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice, and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. There is also an argument that they are actually Joshua the priest, and Zerubbabel, because they are called that very thing in their day by the Lord, and they are anointed and stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Revelation 11 verse 5 And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. If any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Both Moses and Elijah had their enemies consumed by fire during their earthly ministries, while Enoch did not. Numbers 1635 And there came out a fire from the Lord, and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. 2 Kings 1 verse 10 And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consumed thee and thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven, and consumed him and his fifty. Revelation 11 verse 6, These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. The first part of verse 6 speaks of Moses, and the second, and last part, both point to Elijah, not Enoch, a Gentile. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not. Elijah mentions this in 1 Kings 17 verse 1, and have power over waters to turn them to blood. God says this to Moses in Exodus 7 verse 17, and to smite the earth with all plagues. Moses did this in Exodus 8 to 11. Revelation 11 verse 7, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. When they shall have finished their testimony, 1260 days later, According to verse 3, the beast that ascendeth out of the pit shall make war with them. The beast cannot kill them until God allows it to happen. When does the beast ascend out of the pit? After he is killed and rises again from the wound to his head. That is how he becomes the son of perdition. Perdition is a place, it is the bottomless pit, and it is a place of death. From there he is birthed, or born again, as the son of the pit, or the son of perdition, or the son of death. This beast ascends out of the bottomless pit the exact moment that the dragon, the angel of the pit is cast, down to earth with a key to the pit, and he resurrects the beast, who until this time was never referred to as the beast. Satan now incarnates himself into the man of sin, so that the world will wonder after him from then on. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 to 12 Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Remember ye not, that, when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, 
whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. John 17 verse 12 While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Acts 1 verses 24 to 25 And they prayed, and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, shew whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. Some versions sadly say, that he should go where he belongs, which has a totally different meaning. This all occurs at the midpoint of the tribulation period, because the two witnesses are to preach for three and a half years. Once they are finished preaching, God allows the devil to kill them, and not before, and shall overcome them and kill them. Moses and Elijah are killed. Where did Moses die at? On the other side of the Jordan River. He never entered the promised land except for the brief time with Elijah talking to Jesus about his death there on the Mount of Transfiguration. What does the book of Jude tell us about Moses' death? That Michael contended with Satan over Moses' body. Jude 1 verse 9, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Why, did they both want the body of Moses? When God resurrects Israel, he will reunite the body with the spirit. Satan wanted Moses' body to try to prevent that from happening. Satan lost the dispute, because Michael said, The Lord rebuke thee. Luke 13 verse 33, Nevertheless I must walk today, and tomorrow, and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Both of the prophets, Moses and Elijah, will then be killed in Jerusalem to fulfill this verse. Revelation 11 verse 8, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. The great city, this is unfortunately, the city of Jerusalem, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Jerusalem's spiritual leaders led the nation away from the Messiah instead of to him at his first coming. Because of that, it has remained the most tumultuous city in the world and will remain so until they acknowledge their Savior. Revelation 11 verse 9, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and in half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Shall see their dead bodies. This would not have been possible even 75 years ago, but with the invention of the television, and now the internet, the whole world will know what is going on. Remember, the devil is the prince of the powers of the air, which includes the airwaves, and he will use them to deceive the world into following him. The average lost person when he realizes that these two individuals are causing it not to rain will hate these two, because they are causing them much hardship. The world does not care that it is a judgment from God, they just care whether they are going to be able to grow the food they need, or that they will have water to drink. Three days and in half, why three days and a half, and not three? Because that is how many years these two witnesses prophesied to them. Revelation 11 verse 10, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. This verse implies that these plagues are global, and not just centered around the Middle East. The people of the earth will know that the two prophets were the ones tormenting them and yet they do not repent. Revelation 11 verse 11, And after three days and in half, the Spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. After three days and a half, one day for each year they prophesied to Israel verse 5. They prophesied forty and two months, which is three and one half years. Thirty-six months make three years, and six more make forty and two months. They served Israel for half of a biblical week. A biblical week lasts for seven years according to the story of Jacob and Laban in Genesis 29 verse 27. The spirit of life from God entered into them. This will be just as it was with Adam's lifeless body on the sixth day of creation when God breathed in Adam's nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. Here we have the second and third people being begotten from the dead in the scriptures with Christ being the first prior to this event. Begotten to die no more. Romans 8 verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Revelation 11 verse 12, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, 
and their enemies beheld them. A great voice from heaven, Revelation 14 verse 2 and 16 17. Come up hither, here we see a rapture of these two Old Testament saints after their resurrection from the dead. They were literally begotten of the dead, never to die again. The same words, come up hither, are used as were used in Revelation 4 verse 1, to call John up in the spirit, except these two were called up physically. They both will put on incorruption and will be able to stand in God's presence. They ascended up to heaven in a cloud, numerous times in this book, and throughout the Bible, we see clouds associated with ascending and descending to and from heaven. In Acts 1 verse 9, a cloud received Jesus at his ascension. In Revelation 1 verse 7, it says that he cometh with clouds at the end of the tribulation period. Revelation 11 verse 13, and the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. A great earthquake. The tenth part of the city that fell is a reference to the old city of Jerusalem. In the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. It is interesting thing to note is that there are about 35,000 people that live in the old city today. If a bunch of the Jews flee into the wilderness, then the numbers would be spot on, and they will be. Luke 21 verse 24. The remnant were affrighted. Notice the reference here to the remnant. It is a reference to the Jewish believers that have survived unto this point. The fact that it is not the remnant of people remaining on the earth is clear by the statement that they gave glory to the God of heaven. Even with all the signs and wonders, the lost continue rebelling against God. So, it is clear that the remnant of Jewish believers were not the ones crushed when the earthquake happens but her enemies will be. Perhaps when the two witnesses speak their last message, those who were there continually to oppose them notice that they are no longer being protected by God. When they kill these two prophets, God allows an earthquake to kill 7,000 people in that city that opposed God's men. The remnant of believers will see what has happened and give glory to God. Just like in Goshen, Egypt, where Israel's enemies suffered, but God's people were protected. Revelation 11 verse 14, the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. The second woe is past. This began in Revelation 12 verse 12. There is no way the two witnesses minister in the first three and half years alongside the 144,000. The third woe, the seventh trumpet, will open the seven vials. Notice that the third woe cometh quickly, soon after the second woe. Revelation 11 verse 15, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. The seventh angel sounded, this is the angel of the church of Laodicea. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. When it says that glory and honor and power are given to Christ, it is all that was usurped by Satan, as the God of this world. This is the long-awaited fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. The apostles even asked after Christ's resurrection if he would at that time restore again the kingdom to Israel and now it is finally at hand. Acts 1 verse 6. This is the point in heaven where all of Satan's armies are removed from the thrones, and principalities, and powers which they were usurping, and they are replaced by the body of Christ. We in the church have a heavenly destiny, while Israel has an earthly destiny. Heaven will at that time operate completely in accordance with God's will as Satan has been evicted forevermore. With the church in its place in the heavens, the final three and a half years known as the Great Tribulation begins. The kingdoms of this earth are humbled so that at the onset of the kingdom, they will fall right in line under the Messiah's reign. Revelation 11 verses 16 to 17 and the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces, and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art, and wast, and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power, and hast reigned. The four and twenty elders, Revelation 4 verses 5 and 10, 5 colon 8, 14, 11 16, and 19 colon 4. Revelation 11 verse 18, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. The nations were angry, why do the heathen rage? Psalm 2 verse 1 below, thy wrath is come, Isaiah 13 verse 9. The time of the dead, that they should be judged, the dead believers from Israel's program will be raised and receive rewards in their kingdom at this time. Thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, Revelation 22 verse 12, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth, 
Isaiah 13 verse 9, Psalms 2 verses 1 to 11, Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, against the Lord, and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder, and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree, the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces, like a potter's vessel. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth, serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled, but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Saints that will have gone on to heaven will not try and talk God out of these judgments, because we will be like him in that we shall see his plan, and our wills will be aligned with his perfect will once we are changed. Revelation 11 verse 19, And the temple of God was opened in heaven. And there was seen in his temple, the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings, and voices, and thunderings, and an earthquake, and great hail. The temple of God was opened in heaven. We see here a temple in heaven at the end of this chapter, that is not the same temple that is found in the first verses of this chapter. This temple is without sin, and it will always have the glory of God residing in it. It is the temple of God in heaven, that the earthly one is patterned after. Revelation 15 verse 5. The ark of his testament the place where Jesus sprinkled his blood on the actual mercy seat. Revelation 15 verse 5 also. And there were lightnings, and voices, and thunderings. This is now the third time that these three words are used together. The other two times are in Revelation 4 verse 5 and 8 colon 5, and the order of their appearance is different. Plus, they are also used in Exodus 19 verse 16 at the giving of the law. And an earthquake, and great hail, these do not occur in heaven, or there would have been a heaven quake instead. These originate in heaven from the temple of God, because of the sinfulness of mankind.